Moin Deko Freunde, heute ist einer der schönsten Arbeitstage in meinem Leben. Wir sind äh, bei Thelima in Stellenbosch. Ähm, mit Thelima verbindet uns eine ganz lange Geschichte, dazu werde ich später ein bisschen mehr erzählen. Ähm, zunächst möchte ich Ihnen vorstellen Thomas Webb, den Sohn von Giles Webb, der vor langer, langer Zeit diese Farm äh, begonnen hat, eine Legende in der Stellenbosch Weinregion. Äh, und er wird uns jetzt ein bisschen was erzählen, ähm, was Thelima ausmacht, was Thelima ist all about. Hi Thomas. Thomas, can Hi. you be so kind and tell us a bit about Thelima? What is what is the story of Thelima? What is it all about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, welcome to Thelima. Uh, this actually used to be a run-down old fruit farm that um, my parents bought in 1983, and um, my dad really liked the site. He thought there was a lot of diversity to grow a, a range of different uh, varieties, and yeah, we went about pulling out all the orchards, planting vineyards building a house, building a winery, building a dam, and uh, yeah, just went from there. So it's now close to 30 years old, the farm, as, yeah. a, as a wine producing place. Yeah, we uh, planted our first vines in 1985, and the very first vines we actually planted was this vineyard right over here, that we're standing next to, this Cabernet Sauvignon block. Which is now the Mint Cab, it is as you mint just cab. told me. And you know, a very interesting story how it's called the Mint Cab is, um, that minty eucalyptus -y character we get on our Cabernets is all due to the eucalyptus trees that are right next to us. And there's a compound in the eucalyptus tree that gets absorbed into the fruit and it gives it this minty eucalyptus -y oh, character. Why. That's why. Interesting story. So we're going to taste the wine later. We will most certainly taste the wine later. Uh, just to give you an idea of where we are, um, we're located on the southern slopes of the Simonsburg mountain, uh, about five kilometers outside of the town of Stellenbosch on the road between Stellenbosch and Franschhoek. It's quite a rich band of wine producers that um, live on the southern slopes of the Simonsburg. There's Thelema and our next door neighbor is Takara. Further on there's Rustenburg and then Kanonkorp just a bit further on. So it's uh, quite a home to some very well established producers uh, in this part of the world. You, you explained to me before um, that you were um, fiddling around with organic um, farming nowadays. Yeah. Um, can you explain a bit what, you, what, what your idea behind that is? We, we actually just looking to create the healthiest, most sustainable environment in, uh, in which we can grow fruit. Because we believe we can get better quality fruit growing it in a healthy, sustainable way. Uh, we're not trying to become organic um, merely to put something on a label. We're just trying to get the best out of what we can grow here. Um, so yes, we do have some organic vineyards at the top of the farm, um, but the rest of the farm is also farmed in a very healthy uh, manner. For instance, if there are any pests that are affecting the vineyards, we don't um, use pesticides to remove them. We bring in natural predators that will eat the vector that is spreading this disease, and that, that way we're not impacting on the vines at all in okay. order to remove them. Okay, I see. You put these interesting ribbons here um, around the vines. You must tell us about that. Yeah, th this is a very uh, good example of rem removing a pest without using a pesticide. Uh, th this vineyard struggles but with a, a little pest called the snout beetle. Now the snout beetle can't fly, it can only climb. So in order for the snout beetle to get onto the leaves, in order to eat the leaves and the shoots, it must climb up the base of the vine. So we have put um, some tape around the base with a sticky, a sticky substance that um, the snout beetle won't climb over. Okay. So it tries to come up, gets a bit stuck, doesn't like it, goes back down again. We don't have any damage to the vine. We haven't harmed the vine by using any pest, uh, pesticide and we haven't hurt the snout beetle. Everyone okay, wins. Cool. Um, another example of what we do um, here is we plant a lot of grass between the vineyard rows. Um, we do that in order to encourage competition for the vine. We don't want the vine to have it too easy. We want it to grow in a state of partial stress. Partial stress means that the vine will put all its, en all its energy into the fruit and not into simple vegeta vegetative growth. So we, we want the, the vine to be working hard and you know, okay, cool. making some good grapes. Here we've got uh, the Thelema winery and we've got our red wine fermenters outside, which is, uh, it seems quite unusual, but it makes a lot of sense. We ferment our red wine at about 28 degrees Celsius. The outside temperature during summer is around about 28 degrees Celsius. So it makes a lot of, uh, a lot of sense to ferment it outside so the tanks are naturally heated by, by the warm weather. 
Right, this is uh, the uh, Thelema barrel storage area. Um, here we have mainly Chardonnay uh, wine in the oak barrels. These are all French oak barrels that we import from France. Uh, there are only about, I understand, a handful of species of oak that you can use to make a, um, a, a, a barrel um, suitable for maturation of wine. So there is no, none of these barrels made in this country? The only way it can be made in this country is if we import the oak uh, in staves to South Africa and we can construct the barrel here. But the oak itself needs doesn't to, grow here. It doesn't grow here. Uh, but you get oak from all over the world. We have a little bit of American oak, and, um, but mainly it's all French oak. Well, this is what you mainly read when reading about wines. So they always talk about American and French oak. Yeah, they, they, they're the, the main two others? producers. Yeah, you get Slovenian oak, Russian oak, Italian oak, and I'm sure a couple of other uh, funny countries that oak. produce... Um, okay, but no one works with those in this country. Yeah, the, people are starting to work with them. Okay. Uh, the French oak barrels are... Um, you, the most expensive barrels. Okay. Obviously, a matter of price. How much? How much is a barrel? The, um, the barrel itself. A barrel is anywhere between 700 and 850 euro per barrel, and okay. we only use them for about four years. And I think that's quite a hidden cost that people don't realize or appreciate with uh, with wine. So, if you take the Thelema Cabernet Sauvignon, about five euros we spend mature, uh, on oak maturing that wine. So that, that's quite a big um, portion of, uh, of the cost. For, for how, sorry, for how long are you keeping the, um, let's say, the mint in a barrel? We'll keep that in barrel for about 20 months. For 20 months, and yeah. so you can use it for two vintages? Yeah, but um, then possibly we can use it again later on, but it would have been aged by that stage, so you won't get as much of an oak character, which we do seek on our, our bigger wines, such as the mint, the Malo, Malo Reserve, and the Thelema Cabernet Sauvignon.